Hi there, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy, episode number three. Today we're going to talk about the difference between aquaponics and hydroponics, because there's a lot of confusion out there as to uh, what those differences are, and uh, kind of which ones are most appropriate, how do they work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a bright agrotech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. Aquaponics is a form of hydroponics. I just want to get that out there right off the bat as we're, as we're getting started here. Um, make sure you understand that aquaponics is a kind of a subcategory of hydroponics. So hydroponics is basically anything that is soilless agriculture. Okay, so we're soilless plant production. We're, we're, we're using some kind of technique. There's no soil involved. So, um, you know, we're not relying on the soil to provide the nutrients, to hold those nutrients, um, and to release those nutrients. We're using something that is maybe inert or is certainly not a soil. This could be sand, okay? This could be uh, pea gravel. This could be hydrogen. This could be plastic fiber matrix media like we use. This could be anything or uh, just, you know, basically a tub of water like NFT or uh, DWC. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different definitions of what hydroponics can be. But at the end of the day, it's always soilless plant production. Okay, so traditionally hydroponics has has been used to produce um, plants um, in, in high densities, usually in greenhouses or in areas where the soil is no good. So um, it really started to get traction um, outside of the research setting during World War II. And uh, a lot of the time the army was trying to figure out how to provide these uh, spoilable, uh, you know, products that just don't transport very well. How do we, how do we get these to our troops in these different areas? So that was really when they began to experiment with hydroponics, and that accelerated through the 50s. And pretty soon, um, commercial folks started looking at this and saying, "Ah, this might be a great way to control, you know, plant pathogens, you know, that are really hard to remove from soil. This might be a great way to get a little bit more production, manage nutrients better." And uh, pretty soon it had it had taken off. And today, um, many of the tomatoes that we eat are grown in greenhouses using some form of hydroponics. Many of the cucumbers, many of the heads of lettuce, much of the basil, many of these things that 100 years ago were all field crops are now being grown in greenhouses with hydroponic techniques of some sort. And uh, almost all of these are using a fertilizer solution. Okay, so they're taking water and they're mixing this fertilizer into the water and they're injecting it, managing it, making sure the pH is right, the EC is right, and uh, keeping these crops growing uh, using this hydroponic technique. So, um, yeah, you'd be amazed at how much of the food that you're eating has been grown hydroponically. And, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of one of those, those funny things. Um, you know, it, it's crept up on people. They, they don't realize how big of a deal hydroponics really is. And uh, they don't really understand how this industry is growing. I mean, it's, it's growing incredibly fast. Every single year, it's, it's growing, 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 because it allows us to do what's called controlled environment ag. And it basically means that instead of being out in a field and being subject to hail, and being subject to tornadoes and winds and snow and early frost and this and that, uh, we can do it in a greenhouse, and we can really bump our production up. So um, hydroponics is a big deal. And um, as aquaponics grew, as people were uh, kind of exposed a little bit more to hydro, a lot of folks started saying, well, I wish there was kind of a more natural or a more organic way to do hydroponics. Now, I want to throw out the caveat here that the, 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 the fertilizers, the chemicals that are used in hydroponics are, at the end of the day, absolutely... Uh, you know, the same as the chemicals that are derived from the breakdown of organic uh, nutrient sources. So if we're talking about, say, fish waste, fish waste breaks down into, nit you know, at the end of the day, it, it, uh, those proteins are nitrate, right? At the end of the day, those proteins are nitrate. Well, if we're adding nitrate um, in the form of, you know, calcium nitrate 
or we're adding nitrate in the form of proteins which break down through this cycle, they both end up being nitrate. And nitrate looks exactly the same, has the exact same effects whether it came from a fertilizer or from fish waste. So I don't want to be communicating that there is something bad about hydroponics or there's something dangerous about hydroponics because that's not true at all. Um, in fact, hydroponics produce can be much safer than many other forms of uh, produce simply because you have tighter control over the inputs. So you know you don't have um, heavy metals getting into your system. And uh, you know that uh, some, of the, some of the concerns, even with aquaponic production, I mean, when it comes to heavy metals or, or something like that, you know that a lot of those concerns um, in hydroponics just, just aren't there because you have so much control. So I want to make that really clear because, you know, uh, we do both aquaponics here at Bright Agritech and hydroponics. We do both. And we feel like a lot of the time a two-pronged approach is uh, really valuable. Honestly, you need to be choosing um, your technique based on your market. And if anyone's listened to our uh, webinars on commercial hydro, um, I would encourage you to do so. But you know that we have a very market-based approach because it doesn't matter how well-intentioned you are if you can't make enough money to survive, right? So um, the big difference between aquaponics and hydroponics is that hydroponics is not using fish waste, typically, or the way we think of traditional hydroponics, not using fish waste. Aquaponics is using fish waste. That's the primary nutrient source for majority of the plant nutrients. So, you know, in an aquaponic system, we have to design it a little differently, right? We can't just take hydroponics uh, systems and slap them together with an aquaculture system and expect everything to work because... Um, now all of a sudden we've got a third component to our system. It's not just fish, it's not just plants, but we have microbes. So we have to design our system for our microbes. And anyone who's um, watched our YouTube videos or done a commercial aquaponics seminar or class with anyone knows that the microbes are the key to the, um, to the aquaponics systems. So um, each has its place, right? Hydroponics and aquaponics, um, like I said, we do both hydroponics and aquaponics here at Bright Agritech. We do hydroponics um, in places where people don't care as much about an organic certification because getting certified organic in a hydro system is not always the easiest thing, right? Um, but, you know, it's good food, it's safe food, it's healthy food, it just isn't always certifiable or it can be hard to certify. So in markets where people don't really care if it's an organic label, if they just want to know that you grew it safely, they want to shake your hand, they want that transparency, they want to know where you live and how they can get a hold of you. If there's a problem, then hydroponics is sometimes more appropriate. But um, if you're in a place where someone wants hydroponic organic produce, um, a lot of the time then aquaponics is, is the way to go. So, um, you know, it just kind of depends on your situation. And, um, you know, the differences between the two are pretty cl clear on an input level. Um, at the end of the day, the product is pretty similar, right? There's not going to be a huge difference in taste between hydroponic and aquaponic. Um, the only differences that arise are usually if there's some kind of nutrient deficiency or some kind of problem in the aquaponic system. So um, when you're kind of thinking about which one to choose, I would just say uh, definitely go watch the webinar. We, I, you know, I did like an hour-long webinar um, not too long back on, on how to pick and kind of how to be thinking about the differences between aquaponics and hydroponics uh, when, you're, when we're talking about markets because it's all about markets. At the end of the day, it's all about markets if you're considering doing it um, commercially. Now, if you're doing it just on a hobby level, it really comes down to simplicity. So aquaponics has more of a learning curve and it has it takes more time to get started. So you've got a six week um, cycling time on almost any aquaponic system and it's about six months before the system is really performing at its, uh, at its capacity. So you're talking, you know, seven months, eight months um, before your system is really rocking and rolling um, at max capacity. In a hydroponic system, it takes you about four weeks right? There's zero cycling time. You put in your nutrients, you get the system running, and uh, everything just grows. So that's one benefit of hydroponics over aquaponics. Now the drawback is that hydroponics, in hydroponic systems, diseases can be a big problem, right? And, um, you know, so 
you know, the, the drawback there is that uh, in aquaponics, plant diseases, um, pathogens, that kind of thing, don't, don't, they don't rear their ugly heads nearly as often as they do in hydro systems because you have an ecology working for you. It's an ecology-based approach to production that hydroponics lacks. So um, keep these things in mind. If you just are doing something for fun, uh, if you've got uh, some kids and you want to show them just kind of how uh, these different organisms interact, then uh, certainly aquaponics can be a really, really great way to introduce them to all these cool little scientific ideas and principles. And it can really be a fun do-it-yourself project to put together and uh, just teach them, teach them kind of the basics of, of the science be behind it. Um, hydro can be the same way, but it's, it's a little bit, in my opinion, it tends to be a bit packaged. So if you're kind of working with kids on a hydro project, it can still be a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, you don't have the fish. There's not as much personality there. So um, there are quite a few other differences, but those are the really big ones right off the bat. Um, I will say that in aquaponics, you are more limited on what you can use to control pests. And this is a concern because if you think exclusion is going to work forever, you're, you're delusional, right? The pests are going to find their way into your system, and when they do, you've got to deal with them. And most of the time, this involves some kind of spray. Now, it can be an organic spray. It doesn't necessarily have to be something nasty. But um, unfortunately, in aquaponic systems, fish are kind of wimpy. And you hit them with a little oil or soap, and they start to keel over. Um, in a hydroponic system, almost any of these options will work, right? The plants, the plants will be just fine because there's no fish. Spraying something like neem oil excessively is not going to kill anything. So that's, that's something to consider as well. But um, for more details, kind of check out our YouTube videos. We talk about um, you know, pest controls and some of these other differences between hydro and aquaponics there. Um, so, you know, take all these things into account when you're thinking about setting up a system, when you're considering what path to start down. And um, a lot of the time we do encourage people who are, want to start with a much larger system to start hydro and then transition to aquaponics. Because, um, you know, if, if you're just getting, if you're, if you're starting with something really big like that, in hydro, you only have to learn a few things, right? You only have to learn... Uh, you know, how to control your pH and your EC, and how to recognize pests and all, do all this stuff for your plants, right? Well, in an aquaponic system, you have to learn all of that. You have to learn all of the different things for your fish. And then you have to learn how to keep your microbes happy in the meantime. So you basically have to learn like two more big categories. Um, there, there's two more big categories of learning if you're going to start an aquaponic system. So this basically means there's usually a little bit more failure when people are starting aquaponics than when they're starting hydroponics. And that's just because, um, unfortunately, you learn the hard way. And, you know, there's all sorts of sayings out there in the aquaponic community about, you know, you're not a real uh, aquaculturalist or aquaponics practitioner until you've killed a thousand fish or <laughs> stuff like that. And unfortunately, that's really true a lot of the time. Um, you know, there are a lot of failures and a lot of fish sacrifice their lives um, to get your system healthy and going. So, um, you know, these are all things to consider. That's not to dissuade you from aquaponics by any means, but that is to say, if you're considering starting off very large, uh, we do recommend that people get a good handle on the plant production elements first. And um, many of our growers are th will start off hydroponic and then transition to aquaponic. Um, so, you know, it's, there's, just because you start with one technique doesn't mean you can't move to another down the road. I will say some of the production techniques out there do not lend themselves to switching very easily, but um, fortunately we use uh, Zipgrow Towers so we can kind of flip back and forth um, between the two pretty easily if we need to. But um, there's lots of options out there. You just want to consider all of the different aspects before you leap into any one technique. So um, if you're interested in hydroponics, um, find, you know, there's all sorts of great information out there. Do your research. Find some good sources for information. Um, if you're looking for kind of a relatively unbiased take on hydro versus aquaponics, you know, we're, we're not fanatics over here at Bright Iowa Tech. We feel like um, it's really important to do the best thing. And the best thing isn't always the thing you thought was the best thing at the start of your journey. 
So um, for a lot of folks, you know, we, we're not married to aquaponics, we're not married to hydroponics, we're married to whatever makes the most sense and works the best for each individual situation. So find some people that you trust, find some experts, um, let's make sure you're, uh, you know, listening to more podcasts, watching our videos, listening to our blogs. There's also, you know, some great real resources on hydroponics out there. One of my favorites is um, a book called Hydroponic Food Production by a guy named Howard Resch. And um, it's actually on our blog. We've got a link to the book on Amazon on our blog. And um, so make sure you check that out. It's a great book. It is going to bring you up to speed on everything you need to know about hydro. And actually, a lot of people who are starting aquaponics, I tell them to read that book too because it has a lot of the kind of technical information that is that is useful. A lot of people will read hydroponic text and they'll say, ah, I just don't understand how this applies to aquaponics. Well, it all applies because, you know, all of the fundamental variables are the same. pH, EC, we're talking about nutrients there. And, um, you know, how the plants grow, the conditions we need to foster for them to grow in a healthy way, and the kind of nutrients we need to deliver, the amount of light, the amount of CO2. All of these things are addressed in hydroponic literature. And it's the kind of thing that we need to understand before we really dig in to aquaponics. So um, check out that book if you want. And if you need a direct link to it, we have a link on our blog um, for, you to, to, for you to find it. And um, it's, it's just a great text. And there are a lot of other great texts out there. Um, you know, so, so don't be afraid to, to look around for some information um, and, and find books that will help you. I tend to read more hydroponic texts, honestly, than just about anything else because, um, you know, they all translate out very nicely and they're very scientific. So you can find kind of exact ratios. You can find exact numbers for a lot of different things. So um, that concludes kind of the, this third episode of Aquaponics Academy. Um, today, you know, the goal is just to introduce the idea of hydroponics, what it is, how it works. And um, I didn't go into too much detail because, you know, I could probably talk for about three hours on hydroponics alone. But um, hopefully it gave you enough information to get started. And uh, make sure you check out our blog. We're, of course, always posting a lot of information over there. And uh, we'll be coming out with a Hydroponics 101 manual here pretty soon as well. So uh, stay tuned. If you're not on the email list, hop on that and uh, get, some, get some of those free resources that we kick out uh, on a pretty regular basis. So... Um, we're hoping that you find these podcasts really helpful, and um, hopefully they're kind of showing you what all aquaponics is all about. And as we move forward, we're going to get into a little more detail, probably next on system design. So what to be thinking about as we're talking about, um, you know, system design, sump tanks, and SLOs, and how to basically put everything together and orient it in the right way. And uh, all this stuff seems simple on the front end, perhaps. But um, a lot of the time, the devil's in the details. And it can be a very simple thing if you know exactly what you're doing. Um, but we, we want you to get started with a really good functional system that's going to serve you well right off the bat. So on behalf of everyone here at Bright Agri Tech, we hope you'll stay connected with us. Subscribe to our podcast uh, for more aquaponic tips and techniques. And uh, we'll talk with you again next time. 